Hi, I'm going to be looking at a regression model here to explain the counts of infected blood cells measured in millimeters squared on the microscope slides and taken from randomly selected individuals. The main feature of this video is showing you how to come up with a model where we start off um, with uh, including all interaction terms and then we drop interaction terms until um, we reach a model um, that is uh, adequate. And we compare the models by comparing the deviances, the residual deviances between each model. So we're going to show you how to test, uh, how to compare models using a test based on deviances. As usual, all this code is on my website. Now, uh, we look at first the data. And I'm just calling up the first three observations because I might have a lot of observations. It shows me that I have cells. That's um, the cell. That's the actual uh, counts on the cells. Counts of the number of infected blood cells. So on the first slide, there is a count of one, one infected blood cell on that slide, and uh, that individual is a smoker. Um, age young male and as normal weight so all we can say straight away is that we have here factors the dependent variable is the counts called cells here and then we've got one two three four explanatory variables predictors they are categorical each one of them so the nature is that they're categorical if we look at the summary Of this uh, data frame, we can see then that smoker is classified as false and true, yes or no, and these are the numbers. So 376 non-smokers, 135 smokers. So smoker is a categorical variable. Moreover, it is nominal. It's nominal categorical. Age that just split into young, mid, and old. Okay, so that's obvious. That's ordinal. So most of the people in this uh, sample are old. Uh, sex, that's obviously that's a nominal, male and female, so there are slightly more females in this sample than males. And weight, that is categorical ordinal, so classified as nominal, obese, and over overweight. Just uh, what is the sample size? Well, we can look at that by calculating the length of my dependent variable. I'm just choosing the dependent variable. 511 observation sample size of 511. Okay, why can't we run a? So the idea, let's just. So we want a model, conditional mean that explains the uh, number of uh, infected blood cells, number of infected blood cells, and I given these uh, predictors. So just why can't we? treat the cells as if it was continuous and then just run a normal regression. Well, if we look at the histogram of the dependent variable here, we can see that most number of cells is, is around zero. So obviously, this is very skewed. And, and like a normal, it does not take the values ranging from minus infinity to plus infinity, i.e. very low numbers and very high numbers. It's a very limited range of numbers here. Right, so how do we go about um, fitting a model? regression model to this. Well, we're going to use this kind of hierarchical hierarchical approach where we kind of um, if we include uh, um, three-way interaction say we have to include everything below that three-way interaction. Okay. So first what I've got I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with a model with all the interactions. So what I've got here one, two, three, four factors. I put all four factors in. And using the star between them means that I include everything below these four, uh, this uh, four-way interaction. Okay, I'm going to call it, it's a Poisson, so it's a Poisson regression. Enter. Look at it. And the first thing, I'm not actually interested in the coefficients at this stage. What we want to look at here is the residual deviance. Because with the Poisson, we've got to see whether we have over dispersion problem. So here, residual deviance 
is 736 about and it is exceeds the corresponding degree of freedom that suggests we have over dispersion so recall how we get around that we get around that just by refitting the model but by using the robust uh, Q, uh, quasi MLE otherwise known here as instead of calling it family we call it quasi Poisson And all that does is it just adjusts the standard errors so that the uh, so that it now um, it corrects for the G, um, assuming the GLM assumption that the variance is proportional to the mean. Okay, well that's all four-way interactions. Now, um, what we do then is start dropping these interactions. You know, because having a four-way interaction is going to be very very hard to. Uh, interpret the coefficients of what it means to look at four-way interactions. So that's good. And this is R4 here represents what they call the saturated model. It's got basically it's got all it's got the highest level of interaction that we can have. Um, so what we want to do now is we want to drop the four-way interaction. We can use the update command here, which saves us typing everything else out. So we say update this object R4, and then comma tilde dot dot, supposing that meaning that everything in the model and then minus except for this term here so notice I have not put stars between these guys I'm putting this uh, um, col colon right because if I put star there that means I take the entire thing out so the colon here just represents that term all right enter now what we're going to do is run a whole load of these models um, sequentially dropping dropping variously the uh, interaction terms, the higher interaction terms, and then we're going to compare them at the end uh, by uh, running a deviance test. Okay. So once I've got four way I've dropped four interactions, I've got a whole load of three-way interactions, and now there's many ways I can drop three way interactions. So uh, say I drop sex, age and weight, and I can drop uh, also age, weight and smoker smoker, age, sex, and so on, right? So there's lots of things to play with. I'm not going to run absolutely everything because um, uh, it's just going to take forever. And also, um, what you drop, you can just use like uh, theory or what you kind of um, think if you kind of don't want to run absolutely everything. So I've not dropped smoker here because I reckon that smoker's got something to do with the cell counts, but n not necessarily this kind of uh, interaction here. So I've dropped that. Indeed, for the next step, I'm going to drop absolutely all the three-way interactions because even with three-way interactions, they're going to hard to kind of interpret. I'm going to show because it's hard to interpret doesn't mean that we should just drop them, but we're going to see that actually it makes sense to drop them because the tests kind of um, provide evidence for that. Okay, so now I've reached this stage I've reached a two-way interaction because I've dropped all three-way interactions. Alright, so what's my story next? Okay, next I want to show you what the model looks like so far. So look at this mod R2. This is what it looks like. So here are the coefficients. Much reduced, thank God. So we can see that we've got two-way interactions. All the three-way interactions have gone. But even with these two-way interactions, you can see a lot of them are not significant, right? So that tells us we should continue. Um, next, I'm going to just... Uh, we can drop up the two-way interactions um, one at a time. But what I'm going to do now uh, is I'm going to just go for a model here where I've got the additive terms and just a, um, a two-way interaction just leaving smoker and weight. Okay, and next I run once I remove that um, interaction I have the additive model meaning I've only got the main effects so if I look at that there you go only the main effects there And finally, I run the null model. Null model is basically it's the absolute worst mold you can have. Basically, says nothing helps predict your uh, 
your counts. In other words, I just regress the cells on just the intercept, so that just gives you the mean. Right, just the, that's a baseline model. Any mo any kind of predictor worth its salt should be able to improve upon that. So what we do now, we've run a whole sequence of models. We can compare them formally. So using this ANOVA command, first I run R4, R3, R3.1, and so on. Finally, the null model. So I've got one, two, three, four. Anyway, all these models. I type ANOVA, enter, and here's what we have. So we have a sequence of seven models starting with the saturated model, that's absolutely everything in there, then I start dropping stuff one by bit by bit uh, until I reach the most simple model which is simply, it's model 7, just cells regressed on an intercept, i.e. saying nothing helps to predict cells. All right, so somewhere between we expect model 1 and model 7 to be the optimal or the best model. All right. So how do we determine that? We look at this thing called the, uh, start comparing these deviances. Alright, here we need a bit of a uh, um, uh, th theory. No, we're got performing a test, so this is how it works. For a test, we need to know what is the null, what is the alternative. What we're going to be doing here is going to be comparing two models at a time. The null hypothesis is that between the two models, the smaller one is adequate. The smaller one being the one with a fewer number of uh, other factors or coefficients in that model. Same thing. And the test statistic is that we're going to take the residual deviance of the smaller model, which has a degree of freedom, say 2, and we subtract it from it, the residual deviance of the larger model. Okay? And then with that number, we compare it to the critical value from a chi-square table where the degree of freedom is the difference between the uh, it's a degree of freedom of the larger model minus the degree of freedom of the small model. Okay? So let's put that into, into uh, let's give you an example now. Let's compare model 1 to model 2. What you can see is that the, that's the residual deviance of the larger model, it's re residual deviance of the small model. We take the smaller, uh, we take the difference of these two. And the way that you know you've got the right way around is because you always should end up with a positive answer. You can't have a negative answer because chi square. A random variable is chi square it doesn't take negative values. Okay. Indeed, if you just look down here as we're proceeding from model one to model seven, the model is getting smaller, and you can see that the residual deviance increases. Okay. Likewise, the associated degree uh, degree of freedom for the residual deviances increases. All right. Okay. So we type that in. There you go. And the degree of change in the degree of freedom. Just look at the difference, and again, it should be a positive number, so it's 2. Right, so we're going to compare this one, the test statistic value 1.54 with a chi-square of 2 degree of freedom. How do I do that? We look at the upper tail of the chi-square here. So this is at the f doing this at the 5% significance level. All right. So that's 0 0.95. Uh, 0 0.95 means the area to the uh, to the left, so we want there to the right, so it's the same thing. I uh, want well, two degree of freedom value, it's about six. Sin we look at our test statistic, since our test statistic is less than the critical value, we do not reject the null. And the null, remember, is that the smaller model is adequate. Okay, null, the small model is adequate. Other word, in other words, is there any, is, do we go for model one or model two? Our test says that the smaller model is better than the here model one, which is the saturated model, which you would expect to be the case. Okay, well, so you can com you can, can kind of do that now. Go on model two, so you can compare model two to three, and three to four, four to five, five to six, and so on, and so on, and so on, until you can until finally you reject the null, and then once you reject the null. Uh, basically you found the model. So we're going to reject the null if the difference between the uh, residual deviances is pretty big compared to the change in the uh, degree of freedom of the residual. So we just look down here and we can just do it one by one. I'm just kind of trying to save time here. Um, so um, if we look at model five, let's see, four to five, that's a, well let's say, uh, two to three, that's a difference of only, you know, uh, 8, that's not a lot compared to the change up there. Uh, 3 to 4, the difference there is larger, isn't it? It's about 25%.